What's up, you guys? Welcome to a new episode of Striking a Chord. I am Mad Manda. Producer Rich is with me. This took and a while to. It's been like... This took a while to get going, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's been like about like at least a few weeks, maybe a month. Uh, well, I mean, it's not. It is my fault. Well, no, it's someone else's fault. But oh my god, <laughs> life just got in the way. That's that's again. A, yeah, I know. A second bout with this shit. Twenty twenty can go f itself. Can we drop? Are we dropping f bombs yet? Is that okay? Is that acceptable? Or do I have to wait yeah. till the twenty? Fuck twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm just done with this year. <laughs> maybe, maybe with the vaccine out, we'll be getting concerts again within the next six months. Man, I hope so because I've got like a week's worth of vacation time. I'm rolling over. At my 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 full time job, yeah, and you know I'm just I told my my uh, my team today I was like man I'm like you guys when we get concerts come back next year I was like you guys are barely gonna see me at work <laughs> <laughs> because I, it'll be like Friday through two like Friday through Monday you guys won't see me again till to the following Tuesday like I'm just gonna be taking days off left and right for work for concerts. That's what I told the wife. I'm like I think hoping this to is- take some vacations. <laughs> I think it's time that when concerts come back, we just go see things that we would never go see. Like jazz music, yeah. let's F and go. <laughs> like, let's go see bands that I never thought I would say I'd ever see again. Or see, like, well, there might be a couple of bands I wouldn't see again. But there's, it, it's, I'm excited. <laughs> I, I think we're getting yeah. to the point where we might be getting stuff back soon. And I hope so. I mean, there's festivals and... I mean, not just local festivals, but there's also out of obviously like the out of state festivals. Um, I mean, Download Fest in London happens every year, or it's supposed to. Um, you know, and then the regular tours. Last year there was so many that got postponed, and a lot of them were like big milestone anniversary tours, um, bands that hadn't toured in a long time, and you know, we just we need we need that back. We need music pumped into our veins and our souls. I miss, I, I can't believe I'm about to say what I'm about to say. I miss people. <laughs> yeah. I miss some people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss the people at the cons- at the festivals that pee in a trash can beside you. I completely understand that. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh, man, at this point, like, I would kill the pay for an overpriced drink. <laughs> $14 beers. Yes. Oh. I wouldn't even like mind if like getting shoved a little bit. You know what I mean? Are you telling me you would jump into a pit now? Well, I don't know about that. Um, I don't. I don't think I'd jump at all. <laughs> I'm old enough. <laughs> the bones are a little achy. Um, We're the same age, and I'd get into a pit now. <laughs> I don't even know if I can. like. I would get into a pit at Kenny G. That's how bad I miss concerts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think, like, I think if I found myself in a pit, I don't think I would purposely try and get out of it. I think I would just embrace it. But I don't know if I'm, like, gonna go, like, thought out. The, like, I'm not gonna be the one to start the pit. Ah, oh, come on. You're, that's not gonna be. <laughs> you're gonna start a pit now. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Well, we, we Guys, 2020 has been a total shit show. I think that's an understatement. It's just been, I feel like it's one thing after another in 2020. Like literally one thing after another. Just when you get comfortable, you're like, okay, maybe things have settled down. Nope. Murder hornets. <laughs> oh man. It, it, it's just, it needs to be, this year needs to end. It feels like the longest year of our lives. Eight days. Eight days. <laughs> and it's over. <laughs> the longest eight days ever now, watch. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's probably going to be true. On the upside, there has 2020 at least provided us with some pretty good music. Um, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't like an outstanding year for music. But um, there, there was some... I, I would say overall it was a solid year for music, but not an outstanding year. Like there was a couple releases that were like, wow, 
and but not a lot you know like I feel like in the past few years we've had a lot um but this year was just kind of like eh like it was okay you know what I mean like it wasn't disappointing but it wasn't like holy crap like this is the best year ever for music well we didn't expect it to be the best year ever after March did we well yeah that's true (laughs) <laughs> I, I mean, the fact that we even got new music, like the fact that artists took the time to record albums during this time frame, just so we could have new yeah. music. Thank you. But in all honesty, I mean, what else were they going to do? You know what I mean? Like you're stuck at home. You can't <laughs> go anywhere. Yeah, they could have done. They could have did a. They could have binged television shows. This is true, and I think some of them did, <laughs> no doubt. Um, but luckily, like there was enough that uh, that gave us some new music. I know who I'm thinking of. <laughs> I. <laughs> oh boy, Reese is so, guys. Reese is mad at me because I'm angry of my list. He got my list last night. This is the first year. Like it's like done. Like early like usually it's like just pushing the cutoff date of the end of the year oh no usually i get it uh, after the beginning of the year because i think this the the best of 2019 came out on january 13th yeah so i think last year was the first year it got it was late um normally it's like just pushing like the end of the year um because it usually takes me i'm very particular about the 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 choices that i i the al- I can't talk, guys. Forgive me. The albums that... The, <laughs> the, the music that I put on my list. <laughs> I'm very particular about what goes on there. And then the order it has to go in. It has to be in an accurate order. Like, down to the C. Like, which ones did I listen to the most? Which ones, like, were the absolute best? And I usually spend, like, a couple weeks, like, just like getting everything that was released and then cutting it down to like what was the best, what I listened to the most and then putting it in order. Right. This year, it was just kind of like, you know, if I miss something, so be it. If this isn't necessarily in the like most accurate order, you know what? I just want this to be done. Wait, is there, is, <laughs> is it, hold want up. 2020 to be over with. Hold up. Hold up. Is there not an actual order to this list or is it just albums? No, it's an order. It's just, well, that I makes, mean, you could have saved yourself it, like to my own science. It's just like not as particular or, or accurate as I have been in the past. That's all. You could have argued your way out of me being less angry. If you would oh, have been I don't just like, you're angry. I would oh, have because it, it, makes, it makes a better show. You, you could have <laughs> just been like, I, I, there's no order. And I could have been like, oh, now I understand. Okay. I'm no. not as angry. Yeah, all right. I don't need to create it out for myself. <laughs> do we guys, start Rich with... Rich is the... mad at me. Well, yeah, I was going to say, do we start there? Because F. <laughs> yeah, we can start there. So Rich is mad at me. I sent him my list last night. I finally finished it. He's mad at me because both Taylor Swift albums that were surprisingly released this year are not even in my top 20. They are numbers 23 and 24 on my list, um, with, with Evermore being above folklore. I do agree with that. Um, I do agree with that. That's the only thing he agrees with. Oh my God, Evermore is so good. So So. here's my thing. And I tried, I think I've listened to Folklore in its entirety once, maybe twice. And then I've listened to like it like halfway through, probably another once or twice. And that's it. Now, for me, if you know anything about me, like I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I absolutely love her. Um, but her old albums, like, I, I mean, if, if she was still releasing the same kind of music that she, as she was before, I mean, I would be staying up till midnight when the album was dropped. I'd be listening to it nonstop. Um, oh, I can't but wait I'm not going to lie. I With can't... these last few albums, starting with Lover and then obviously Folklore and Evermore, um, I just haven't found myself interested enough to listen more than once or twice i don't put whole albums on my playlist and 
all three of those are on my playlist as a whole. So is Reputation. See, and I'm a big, I know most people don't, don't listen to albums all the way through. I think I might be one of the rare few that do, but I love being able to listen to an album all the way through. Um, it's just, it's great. You can put it on and not have to skip a single track. That's what I love. And I just haven't been able to do that with a, with a Taylor Swift album in a long time, probably since Reputation. I see. I complete. I think the, I, okay. So one, we would have never got these two albums had it not been for COVID. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if they would have come out, but they probably would have came out years later. Well, like at the very least, like a year apart. We got them in the span of six months. Mm -hmm. Because I think Folklore came out in June. Something like that, yeah. June or July, and then Evermore just recently came out. Mm -hmm. I feel that history is going to look very kindly on these two albums. I think with this, I don't know, man. I do. I I really do because they they did go number one, which I. So here's the thing, for me. So with Taylor Swift, you know, it it. I'm trying to be very careful how I word things. Um, it kind of surprises me that like these two albums went number one so quickly. And that's not to take away from from the album. They're good albums, don't get me wrong. But there are certain kind like there's there's a certain level of good. Like I prefer older Taylor. And She's she's at that point in her career where she's she's being more artistic, which is great. But I want I want that that personal touch that her music has always had up until now. Um, and may, I, mean, I don't know if it's just because folklore and Evermore are based on fictional characters that she made up. So maybe that's why there's a disconnect for me. Like the lyrics are so good, but they're not like Taylor's like fearless good. They're not speak now good. You know what I mean? Like, and granted, like, yes, they're more mature now, but they don't feel as personal. I kind of disagree with that. Like there's nothing on either of these two albums. I can, I feel like you can sing a lot too. But they're not that type of music. They're not that you're going to put on. That's the problem. That's what I want, though. I want the music you can sing along to. But this is her going down a different route for to release albums during a time where fans aren't getting new music. And I can't really say that outside of a few others, because the other ones you introduced me to, because I know that was made during this time frame, too. Same principle. Like, I'm never going to put those on just dry, going down the road, but I will listen to those albums all the way through. I don't know if I want to mm. give that away, but... Like, they're not the same. Like, they're not the same. Do we just tell who that is, too, now, or what? <laughs> I don't know. You kind of lost me now. No, the Smith & Myers <laughs> albums. Okay. Oh, so, okay. Same principle. Like it's the like it's not the same as listening to Shine Down. It is not. But no, and that's the thing of. It still sounds like the like the voice. You know, the voice is still the same, but it's not the same heavy. I'm gonna be in your face music that we've right. come to but know. But it's also from. not the full band either. No, but neither is folklore. Is not all of it. Like when when Taylor goes back on tour. You're not going to see like the lights and the pyro during the folklore and evermore music. And so here's, that's the other thing I was going to say. So how do you tour with albums like these? Because they're very stripped down, which I like. I, I love that. But there's a disconnect for me in the music. So here's somebody who's used to doing full band, you know, full state, like packed stadiums and 
with everyone singing along and stuff. You can't bring in these types of albums to to a, to stadiums. Like this is more of like a intimate, smaller venues, and someone like Taylor Swift is going to sell those places out in thirty but, seconds. But remember, during, so how does that work? Well, during Reputation, she did a couple acoustic songs, and the entire place was going bananas for it. Right, but those songs that she did acoustic were songs from the era where he, they were, you were able to sing along to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I disagree they were with... songs that, like, even stripped down, you could still sing along See, to them. See, I disagree the with songs that. songs on, on Evermore and Folklore, there's nothing there that you can sing along to. Oh, I disagree with that completely. I I think, I think with Willow and the other song on Evermore that's, like, about killing... Uh... The one that got compared to Goodbye Earl. Oh, No Body, No Crime? Yeah, I love that song. And <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those things, and over time, it's going to gain even more of a cult following. I just feel this happening. Where I think even people are going to rediscover, like later on, discover these albums exist if they didn't listen to them now. And also to add, she never did tour with Lover. Right, yeah, because of COVID. Right, so plus she was going to do the, the the festival of Taylor, so mm-hmm. so that that also makes this a lot easier where she could play the songs, a few songs off these two albums, at shows. There's the Disney Plus special that shows all of the songs being recorded. Which... Yeah, I mean, I like okay, yeah. So when she gets to the portion of her show where like she strips things down, yeah, she could probably pull a couple of these two albums like a couple songs off these two albums off but to do a whole tour devoted oh she's to not going to album i'm just saying though like typically when you like when an artist tours especially off when they just released a new album they're playing most of that new album well the reputation tour was only half of the album that's still half of an album that's yeah, like but seven but Lo- songs at least lover is the commercial album lover's gonna have the more songs played off of it you could play a couple of songs from both of these albums, and that's still 10 to 15 songs already. Plus, you know she's going to do her older stuff, so that's that's at least 25. Yeah, but there's not going to be enough of the older stuff because she's going to have to play a couple of these. I don't, I don't know. I'm just Maybe I'm just getting old. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I prefer... I just feel like the Fearless, Speak Now, and the Red era of Taylor. Like, that's what I want. Like, I want that right. pop rock sound. But those eras are gone for now. Like, that's... That's the problem. <laughs> but it's not a problem. I, artists need to evolve. If you stay... Absolutely. In... I'm the first one to say that. But I'm just... I, I'm not a fan. I'm really not... I just don't prefer these two albums. I don't think they're... Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was in the car all, like, most of the day on Monday. And I think... Willow came on the station and I know I like it as a song, but when it comes on the radio, it's not something I'm going to leave on. Like I'm going to skip to a station that's got a song that's not even necessarily a little bit more upbeat, but just something I feel connected to something I can sing along to. And I don't feel connected to this new era of Taylor song. But I mean, this era is not like these two albums are not that way. I, I think lover is that way, but that's a whole nother conversation. No, it's really like even Lover, like you can sing along a little bit more too. Um, now the problem I have with Lover is it was a little bit more like the sounds were. I, I'm not into that. Um, those like electronic and synthesizers. We, and that. I'm not. I'm not into that. We really are the yin um, and yang of music <laughs> because we are complete opposites. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I like the stripped down aspect of these two albums it's just something about the songs i can't connect to like the lyrics don't fit the music maybe or maybe it's just like i said like they feel like concept albums which is i don't like concept albums either because you can't you you don't have a connection to those characters that they're singing about because they just made them up to we know nothing about 
And I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. That's the reason why they were 23 and 24 on my list. I mean, I, I want to go. Uh, I just think they're ahead of another <laughs> album that's on this list without naming them. Because that's a whole music news story, and that's a whole episode of its own self. We're not going to get into that. But I mean, it, I just <laughs> See, the, the problem is, is like I like that. Like I know which one you're, what album you're referring to, and I'm not without talking about the artist. I I just genuinely like the songs on it. Like there was the album itself. Like I was able to listen to from front to back. But there was at least like three songs that I have I added to. Uh, my regular playlist that I go back and listen to and can sing along to. Like, I felt connected to that. You know what I mean? Here's my there problem. There really wasn't anything on the Taylor albums that I, I felt like that. Here's my off. problem with that album. You could pluck that album out of now, put it back in the year that that band was relevant, and it still sounds like the crap that was when they were relevant. It, it sounds like 2004. Huh? <laughs> I said to each their own. <laughs> I, it does. They didn't change their sound. It's still the same band. I mean, they they did a little bit, but maybe that's why I like it because I'm itching for that for that nostalgia. Because that's what's lacking in today's music. And here we go again. That's that shirt will be in the store. Last debate. <laughs> that shirt will be in the store. <laughs> You're gonna be hearing more about that that statement. <laughs> All right. Do we want to get to um, your list? <laughs> yeah. So since you only came up with five i guess i have to um skim through my eps and uh yeah because I mean, that like, weren't included on an ep or album i'll be um, com i'll be completely honest with you i don't know what's a single anymore and what's not so here's how i do my list for anyone who's new so i do it in three categories i have albums and i have eps and i have songs not included on an ep or album so here's what that means so for eps the definition of an EP, so how I categorize, how I define EP, anything that's less than seven songs is considered an EP. Now, this year was a little bit different because there were a couple EPs on my list that have maybe eight songs, seven or eight, but because they had EP in the title, I included them as an EP and not an album. Um, if it doesn't say EP and it's eight songs, I put it under album. Um, now, for songs not included on EP or album, these are singles that, like it says in the title, were, are, are, not, uh, are not part of an EP, they're not part of an album. Those are just individual singles that some artists release, released. So we'll start there. So like, so Lauren Dusty, who you guys um, have heard me talk about before, she released this, um, two singles this year. One was just last week, actually. Um, and then one was maybe like a month ago and that's the one that i have on my list it's such an incredible song if you guys have not heard it yet you need to um i'm pretty sure i posted about it on the um podcast uh instagram and facebook pages but it's called the broken time so i highly recommend that it's a fantastic song and then i also included kevin McAllister featuring ryan kinder uh will survive you guys heard us talk about this on the episode we did with Ryan when we were talking to him about it. Um, it just, especially this song, like really, especially was very fitting for this time. Like it came out in like March or April, I think. And it was right around like, like right after the pandemic started. It's just, it's such a fantastic song. Um, and uh, Ryan's actually going to be giving it a new life on his duet. It's essentially like a duet album that he's releasing. Um, next year so i'm really excited to see what he does with this um and then what else is that here brantley gilbert so he released two more singles um because i think it was last year he released fire and brimstone and so this year he released two extra singles one of them was called hard days and again it's just a perfect song for this year um but really any time of year um it just kind of goes it's just kind of saying like you wouldn't know how to appreciate the good things if it was if you didn't have bad days. You know what I mean? Um, and he obviously says a lot more eloquent than I do, um, but it's just I, I I really recommend it. 
Um, yeah, and then so like Thomas Brett didn't release a full album this year. He released um, a single, and that was called What's Your Country Song? So that's on here. So stuff like that. Like I said, like songs that were just released as singles, not part of an album or an EP or anything like that. Um, what else? Um, so 6 a.m. So another song that's on here, uh, 6 a.m., which um, also features on this particular song, Corey Taylor, Joe Elliott, Brantley Gilbert, Ivan Moody, Slash, AWOL Nation, and Tommy Vex. Um, and that song's called Maybe It's Time. And that's about um, recovering from alcoholism, basically. Um, and it, it's a really great song. It's a powerful song. Um, and all these voices on here are just fantastic. Um, so it's an excellent collaboration. Um, so I thought that was one of the, the better songs released this year. And who else did we get? Oh, I had to include Ryan Shaw because he and Rob Thomas did a song together along with guitar um, guitarist Derek Chucks and that song called Lemon Pain. You guys know anything with Rob Thomas, I'm going to check out. Uh, and this song is just so, so, so good. And again, it was another one that I uh, talked about on uh, the social media pages for the podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go through every single song on here. Uh, Ed Sheeran's new song, The Afterglow, which was just released on Monday, is fantastic. And it's a, a, here's a perfect example of a song that's slowed down. It's stripped. You know, I'm pretty sure it's just all acoustic. Um, but it pulls you in. It's not boring by any means. And she's going to kill me, but I, I was a little... I feel like, that's, like I'm contradicting myself because I did like the Taylor Swift album, but they also felt a little boring at times. Like, I, guess, I don't know if I just had to be in the mood to listen to them or what it was. Um, but so here's an example of a song that is stripped down but will not bore you at all. It's the same thing. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the same thing. <laughs> um. I'm trying to think of something that was on my list that might surprise you guys. Uh, hmm. No, I don't think. I think the only thing that might surprise you guys is so Kaido, who is a DJ. Um, he's known for doing a lot of collaborations with um, other artists and. Uh, Re, kind of like remixing classic songs and so one that he did this year was with tina turner's for her uh, what's love got to do with it one of the best songs you will ever hear is what's love got to do with it um, and this remixed version it's great because it doesn't take anything away from the original um it just modernizes it like in the perfect balance um so i guess that might surprise people because you guys think i only listen to country <laughs> Um, but I thought that was really good, so I had to include that on my list because it wasn't included on his full-length album. This was a separate single. And, yeah. And then, so for EPs, I've got, so Sam Grow is, uh, I don't want to say he's up and coming. This is like his second EP, but he is more underground and just starting to make his way to the mainstream. And so he released a new EP called Me and Mine, and it is fantastic. It's like the most country thing I've heard all year. Um, obviously, Jordan Davis, I love him, so I loved his new EP. And uh, yeah, everything else, I would say you guys have heard us talk about on here. Um, Jordan Rager, Matt Stell, Riley Green, Ryan Hurry, Travis Denning. Um, you guys have all heard me talk about them on the podcast so many times before. Um. Were there any songs, Rich, that you can think of that you were, I don't know, obsessed with or whatever that were released this year? That wasn't by Taylor Swift? No, I'm trying to think. Like, it's been a weird year for me listening to me. I'd have to go to my Apple playlist. <laughs> because I don't remember what I've put on it from this year. I discovered a punk band okay. that does covers, which I've, I've, Falling in love with them, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they've done a... You know who I... Oh! You know who I really got into this year? Sorry, who? go ahead. 
No, I, I actually thought of something. I've really fallen in love with AJR this year. Okay. I got introduced I think to them. I know. Yeah, I mean, they do the bang song that's out now. It's probably in like 37 commercials and TikToks, but they <laughs> but they also have a song about The Office, which is my favorite show ever, and that's actually really fun to like they have some good music. I know one of their songs and that one's burn the house down. Um, I yeah. like that a lot. Other than that, I haven't really listened to anything else by them. Uh, I really don't have much on my playlist from this year. <laughs> Just letting everyone know. <laughs> Not saying I hate on the year, but you know. Like I said, it was kind of like it just like a an okay kind of year. It wasn't anything super outstanding. Um, but you know who really surprised me? Who uh, I, I I was a little slightly disappointed in myself for jumping on this uh, this bandwagon. But um, I really enjoyed Harry Styles this year. Why are you surprised about um, jumping on that bandwagon? Because it's not my typical kind of music. Like I generally don't like don't like those newer boy bands um or anyone that comes from them um especially and i generally don't like the the newer pop music um especially like the the bubblegum pop but harry's got his own little his own style and it it doesn't really fit anything else that's that's in the pop mainstream right now so maybe that's why i was a little more willing to to let myself like his music. Um, and so his album, the whole album was not great. There was like the last half of it, I think was like a little kind of like, kind of like fell apart for me. Um, but the beginning, like the first half was actually really good. And so I absolutely like love adore you. That's like a friend told me about that song. And I was surprised that like he enjoyed that song. And so then when I, so now when I, after that, every time I heard it, I had to listen to it because I could only think of like a thing jamming out to that song and it was the funniest thing for me. Um, but then the more I listened to the song, the more I really enjoyed it. And so now it's like, I saw my playlist, like I, I will not turn it off if I hear it on the radio. And then I heard his second single, Water, Watermelon Sugar. And I, it's a good song. It, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, but I yeah. really enjoyed that song as well. Yeah, you know, he's just like, I, I uh, watched him on SNL a few weeks ago and was just pleasantly happy, which is very yeah, rare for but, music today. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was kind of surprised at myself for uh, for enjoying her style, but I'm a fan. At least those two songs. And Falling. That was another good one. Oh, did not have that on my, what I was going to hear today. So that's fun. <laughs> See, I, I knew I would surprise you somehow. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with some people's minds when we talk about albums because I only have five because <laughs> that's all I could come up with. So I had, I didn't think I was gonna have this many. Um, so I generally, I generally just try to do twenty, but sometimes, sometimes it gets hard because then you'll think of like one or two more, and I'm not one of those people who can like. Do you like your top 22 albums? No, no. <laughs> it's got to be like top 10, top 15, top 20, 25, or 30. Like, you can't stop at like a weird number. Like, top 21 albums? No, no. Who does that? Me. So I had to do 30. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I mean, I could have cut it a little bit. I probably could have cut it to 25, but, you know, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed a little bit more than that. So, um, so one of the albums on here, I think you guys are going to be surprised that I enjoyed this year was the Black Bear album. Um, and so I really, I enjoyed him on Monsters with All Time Low. And then I went back and listened to some of his own stuff. And I mean, it's something I can listen to every single day, but I enjoyed it more so than I thought I was going to. So for that, I had to include the album on my list. So Black Bear, Everything Means Nothing is number 26 on my list of top 30 albums of 2020. He's done. And, I'm going to have to check this out because I have no idea what this is. <laughs> yeah, I have no you idea. You wouldn't know it if you heard it. You, you say to. that, but you have no idea what's in my top five. <laughs> outside two of them. 
Okay, three of them. I love how like how high your voice just went there. Yeah, no, like come on. I my music taste is all over the place. Oh, I bet you don't have. I mean, I know I got something on my top in my top five that you don't have in your top thirty. Well, yeah. So, oh well, no, I mean she's in my top thirty. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I said top thirty. Oh, okay. Um, cool. actually, two albums in my top five that are not in your top thirty. Oh. Um. Let's see. The country albums. So I didn't have. And this is a little, probably a little unusual, but there was no country albums in my top five. Top 10, not top five. Um, and that's not to say there weren't any good country albums, because there were. There, I mean, there was a lot. I mean, maybe not a lot. <laughs> but just nothing that blew me away that had me listening to it over and over. Um... So the Brett Aldridge album was really good. But again, you have to be in a certain mood to be able to listen to that all the way through. Um, but I still enjoyed that more than I think I enjoyed the Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, so Brett Aldridge's Sunday Drive um, is number 16 for me. And then Hardy's album was really good. Um, but that landed at number 18 on my list. You know whose album didn't make um, your, either one of our list? Looking at you, Green Day. Oh. oh, yeah, no. That Green Day album sucked. It was awful. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> and I want to go to that tour, and that's what makes me more angry. I do want to see Green Day, Weezer, and Fall Boy because I, I mean, that's just. I want to see the opening like, act. Like, that's why that. I don't even care. I want to see the opening act. Like, oh wow, <laughs> that's where. I, yeah, no, I am paying money to go, not to even see the three big bands on this, but to see their opener. Well, you're a special kind of person. Well, that should explain it. Because. <laughs> um. What was I gonna say? Where Where do you want to go in this list? Where do you want to like? Where's the, let's go there. So let's see. Okay. So 15. So I guess I can kind of start at 15. Um, so Gone West, who was um, Colby Calais, um band, um, they were, I mean, they're no longer still. They broke, they got together this year or well, end of last year. Um, they released an EP and then they broke up this year. So they did not have a very long track record. Damn. Um, but their album, their full length album that they released this year, Canyons, was really great. Um, so that landed at my number 15. Uh, Kelsey Ballerini technically released the two albums this year. One of them was the actual album, and then the other was the same song, but reimagined version. So they were more stripped down. And I definitely liked the stripped down ones better because they felt like new songs. And, uh, but they weren't, they weren't boring at, by many means. They were just, they felt like new, new songs entirely. Not to say that the, that they were bad to begin with, but these just felt a little bit different and they felt a little bit more raw. Like it, when you have lyrics that don't fit the music, it's harder to appreciate those songs. So by reimagining them, it, brought those songs to like it gave them a new life um and so for that like i really enjoyed um ballerini by kelsey ballerini so she was my number 14 um manny and tay they really have come a long way and so their new album the way it feels uh was really good um i think they did an excellent job with the songwriting and there's a duet on there with dirk spentley um, you know, they both got married this year, so that influenced a lot of their songwriting. Um, and it was just overall a really great album. I don't think there was a song on there that could be skipped. Um, so that was my number 13. 12 was the new Lee Bryce album. Um, the title track, Hey World, one of the best songs released this year. Um, and again, it was written, you know, because of the pandemic. And it's just, 
it's just a really great song, um, especially like if you're in your feelings. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend listening to that. So that was my number 12. Um, we can go ahead and jump to 10 okay. uh, because my nine and 10 are in your top five. Your eight and nine are in my top. Well, one of them is. I, I only, I guess I combined them as one. No, it's my nine and 10. It's your eight and nine. I'm looking right at your list. Oh, did I move? I, I, oh my God. Okay. I switched the list. What I have written down, I switch <laughs> uh, when I was typing it up. <laughs> of course. Oh, of course you Bye, did. Dad. Oh, send me the new list. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. You have the update. Oh, I have the, the okay. One. I have the updated one. Cool. You have the correct one. I don't. No, Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly is your 10th. It's my number 10. Okay. So that really surprised me. So I, I enjoyed that because good album. it was, it had a punk rock feel, but it had that modern pop hip hop vibe to it as well um so for that that's why it was 10 and not a little bit higher because it was almost my number six. Oh wow which is a big difference yeah but i kind of i brought it down a little bit because that's the kind of album you listen to like when you're you're in a feel-good mood because it's all very upbeat um but in terms of songwriting the little big town was better, I thought. Um, the Rust and Kelly, I thought, was better. So for that reason, uh, Machine Gun Kelly was got moved to my number 10, to get to my downfall. And then, uh, so my 9 and 8, then, are in Rich's top 5. Yeah, it's kind of a one-album thing for me. Like, I combined them into one. Because okay. I didn't listen to them until the same time, so I guess in my head I put them as one album. So for those of you who don't know, so Smith and Myers, it's Brett Smith, the lead singer from Shinedown, and Zach Myers, the lead guitarist from Shinedown. And during this time off, they decided to do something a little bit different, just the two of them. Um, it's an acoustic stripped down um, uh, project. Did you Have you listened to their 2014 album? Smith and Myers? Yeah, they have a 2014 album. No, that I did not know. Yeah, this is not the first album. Oh, I thought this was their like the the first parties the two of them were doing together. No, they uh, outside they, of Shinedown. They did this in 2014, and then they just never went back to it. And apparently, because of everything going on in the world, they went back to it. Wow. Oh, huh. well, I had to check out the 2014 one. Yeah, because you got me really after you sent that to me, and I was like, I'm gonna check this out, and I listened to it, and then I listened to more of it. <laughs> And I went, this is really, really good, including the covers on it are really, really good. So funny story. I initially thought that, so there's volume one and volume two. I initially thought both volumes were all covers. And then on Saturday, when I was looking for them in the car with my brother while we were running errands, I was looking it up on online. And as it turns out, it's a combination of covers and originals. So the odd numbers are originals. The even numbers are covers. I don't know what my favorite so it cover. Jumps back and forth. I don't know what my favorite cover was in the two. Oh, I'm sure it was the Billy Eilish. No, it was one more time. Really? I thought they did Daft Punk justice. Interesting. Yeah, no, not what you expected me to say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm full. I of did some. like their version of the the Post Malone song better now. Yeah, I no, that was really cool. Like every one of the covers is really good every one of the originals is really good it i don't know what it is 2020 is just giving me stripped down albums that i'm listening to hey <laughs> um i really enjoyed their cover of rocking in the free world originally by neil young um rebel yell by billy idol that was that really was good. good that was really good too um their version of unchained melody originally by the righteous brothers was fantastic i mean it gave me chills listening to it like there's just something about it. Like it was so damn good. I've always liked his voice, but I know it's a different style of voice compared to every band. Mm -hmm. it, it just, he has his own distinct sound, which not many artists yeah. from that time frame do. Like you can tell if it's a shinedown song with his voice. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really am appreciative of. Yeah. And I think I, you know, his, he really shows his vocal. I mean, look, like his vocal talent shines on shine now and stuff, 
But in this project, it really, really stands out. Like you really get to like to see like the full extent. I feel like of of his vocal talent. Yes, I definitely buy this one or listen to it on Apple Music or Spotify or wherever you listen to music because it's worth it. It it definitely is. Um, in both volumes, you, you you can't just have one. You need both. Yeah, that's why I say combine them, make them one album. It's great. It's worth it. <laughs> so see, like if this was back in like two thousand five or so you could if you were trying to tell us if you wanted to burn the albums for a friend you wouldn't just <laughs> burn two separate albums you would put them both on one but then your computer would have had they many would viruses because they would fit <laughs> and you would have got those albums on limewire <laughs> limewire was crap man don't tell me. No, it was. I got a lot of viruses on my computer because of LimeWire and FrostWire, <laughs> but I, I still use. I still used them. And now I'm gonna mm-hmm. get arrested. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my eight and nine. So then my number. So what do you have for my number seven? Rustin Kelly. Okay, so Rustin Kelly that really surprised me. So he had last year he released that um the album. I don't know if it was an EP or an album. But it was cover songs, and he did an incredible version of Taylor Swift's "All Too Well" and the Blink One Eighty Two's "Damn It," and they were stripped down versions, and they were fantastic. Like you need to check them out if you haven't already. Um, so this year he released his album "Shape and Destroy," and again, I think there's only maybe one or two songs on there I wasn't crazy about, and it was like middle to towards or middle or towards the end. Um, but the first half of that album is just. Oh, like his lyrics and his voice are just fantastic. There's just something about them. Like, especially like you listen to them at night when you're winding down before you go to bed or, you know, when you're in a, a different kind of a mood. I, I, oh, his, he, he was just really, he, that album really surprised me how much I liked, how much I enjoyed it this year. Um, you said that was my number seven? Yes. Okay, so then my number six would have been Little Big Town? Yes. Uh, Little Big Town, Nightfall. Very much a dark album, um, especially for them, but so good. It's just like, just this tone about it um, throughout the entire album. Every song just has this this darkness to it. Like there's really nothing upbeat that I can think of on this album. Um, but this song writing, it's just very, it's very deep. Um, and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Um, like if you're looking for like pot, like repeats of like pontoon or day drinking or anything like that, you're not going to find that on this album. Um, but it's, it's such a good album. So would you say this is a reinvention for little big town? I wouldn't necessarily say reinvention, but because when did Day Drinker come out? Like 2016? Oh, maybe it's been a while. It might have been, yeah. Um, but I mean, they had Girl Crush and Girl Crush. Oh, that's was, a, yeah. I forgot about that. That was a couple of years ago. I, it, well, Girl Crush was on the same album as Day Drinking. Oh, so that was two. That that had to be 2016 then. Yeah, has that song been out um, that long? Holy crap! Mm-hmm. I know. Um, so think of think of Girl Crush, but just go a little bit darker. That's basically all of Nightfall. I have to check this one out because I do like them. I've liked them since Little White Church. Yeah, and um, again, you're not going to find anything like little, like nothing up no, in the Little White Church. Um, but I mean, Karen Fairchild's vocals are just like I feel like they reach a new level on this album. Um, it's just everything's very haunting. Um, questions is my favorite song on the album. Um, I'm going to check. So this that's out. number six. Okay. So I, I assume your list is back to normal now. <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. So you can go ahead and start with your number five. Oh, my number five is uh, Fiona Apple's fetch the bolt cutters. Really? I love that album. Yeah. I thought, huh. Yeah, no, I, one, I like Fiona Apple's sound and then releasing a new album and I was, I just enjoyed the whole thing from start to finish, which is really weird for me. And I don't know, that's the one album that when the Grammy nominations were made, 
I was okay with being on everything. Huh. Yeah. I if you haven't checked it I, out, you should. I've never been a Fiona Apple fan. I, I never she was never an artist whose voice really caught my attention. Um I never really dug into her music. I love um oh criminal. I, I and ever since then I've been a fan of hers. And I just was excited when this came out. I listened to it. It's on my playlist. Yeah, no, I didn't reveal everything because if I did, then my playlist would have been like this whole list would have been just dead. But I really super enjoyed this album. Interesting. Did not see that coming. Did um, you? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think I knew you were a Fiona Apple fan. Oh no, I love like. Here's the thing with me and listening to thing like listening to anything newish that comes out like even if I'm a fan of like you are with the Taylor Swift albums like I still may not enjoy it but I'm I'm going to try to listen to everything I can with an open mind to a fault because there are just mm-hmm. times that things will catch you and you're like I should not have enjoyed that and that's probably what my number 2 is I shouldn't have enjoyed that mm-hmm. but I f- Fudge and love it. So that's kind of how I fell in love with Fiona Apple. I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy this. And then I watched the music video. I'm like, I love this song. <laughs> so I, there's a lot of Fiona Apple in my playlist. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so my number five was 10 Years of Violent Allies. Um, so they were a band. I haven't listened to them since their first album. Um, the one that really broke, you know, broke them out into the mainstream. Um, and so I wasn't expecting much from this new album. Like I gave it a listen because I thought, you know, let me try it. You know, sometimes a band, they kind of lose their way for a few years and then they come back and it's, you know, a great thing. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, it's a really great album from beginning to end. Um, I didn't have to skip any songs on it. I, I, I just think it was a really great hard rock album. I have not listened to this yet, but it is on my list of things to listen to. I'm not a fan of theirs in general, though, so that kind of... Oh, not... well, you might not like it. <laughs> I still will try. I... I don't know. I, I... I've i seen them live. Does that count? Yeah, uh, I mean, I count, wait, count as what, though? <laughs> yeah, you know, it is, yeah. All right. <laughs> so you're number four. Uh, it's the Smith & Myers album. Oh, we are, which we already talked about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which we've already discussed. So, hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then. Um, <clears throat> so, my number four is the new Sealer album. And so, Sealer is one of those bands who, they're, they're one of my favorite hard rock bands. Um, for a while, they were super consistent with putting out, like, just awesome, awesome albums. Um, and then a couple years ago, I want to say, like, they kind of started falling, oh, like falling a little short. And I, I think there was maybe like the last, the last album I didn't really listen to, um, because I tried to and I couldn't get into it. Um, but this new album, I wasn't again, I, like with the ten years, I wasn't expecting much from it. Um, but it really surprised me um, with how good it is. I feel like it's kind of them going back to their, their roots a little bit. If I were um, to dive so, deeper than fifteen, I would or at least do more than five, this probably would have been on there somewhere. Yeah. I enjoy Seether. So, so you listen to this album? I did. I, But it's because I follow Seether, and they're like, hey, you, we have new music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can't pronounce the title of the album, but it's, it's a great album. Um, it's a lot harder than what um, they probably have been the last couple years. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly how I would describe that, but I, it, it definitely reminds me of the early stuff. What is that? I'll one put it al- that way. What is that one album? Um, I just could not get into of Seether. Which like, um, I'm trying to think because it, I don't think it was, I think it's the one crap. I can't think of the name of the album. My mind just went, yeah, nope. We're just, uh, we're just gonna not remember anything. Uh, I think, hold on, I I think I figured it out. Yeah, 
was not a fan of holding on to the string, holding on to strings better left to fry. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the same one I wasn't really a fan of either. Like, after that one came out, I kind of went, eh, I'm not going to listen to them for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but this album is not like that. This album, like I said, it reminds me of their early stuff. It's harder, um, but it's not, like, unbit Like, it's not unbearable. Like, you know how some hard music is a little unbearable to listen to because it's, like, yeah. especially if it's too much screaming. That's not the case with this. Like, I feel like this is a good balance. That's one genre. Out of all the genres that I have, I have a few screaming songs, but that's a rare, that's rare. I just cannot do that very for long periods. It's a song here and there, and I'm done. Yeah, and see, that's why there's certain bands, like with hard rock, like I like, like, yeah, like you want like the hardness of it, but at the same time, like you still need like melody. Um, and so that's why I like bands like Three Days Grace and Papa Roach and, you know, Feeler. Um, you know, bands that can still rock the fuck out, but still know how to provide, you know, still know, know how to give you a good melody. Like, it took me a while to get into in this moment. Yeah, I'm still, there's, there's maybe like one or two songs by them that I can listen to. Um, but with, for me with them, it's, there's too much. Stream. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But there's too much screaming. Uh, by number, you want me to give my number three? Yeah. I mean, I think you know where this is going to go. Uh, uh -oh. No, and number three is one we've kind of talked about, but it's folklore. Oh. Yeah, no, it's number three. I'm surprised it's not higher. Nope. Unless ever, because Evermore is probably number one. You are correct. My number two is going <laughs> to blow some minds, but uh, I, <laughs> one, it's because I now have an autographed copy of folklore, so that helps. Uh, two, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, but two, I remember the first time listening to it and was just in such a, I don't know. I went from, this has been a weird year. I think everyone can understand mm -hmm. that. And when that album came out, it was just nice to escape because that's what that album felt. While yeah. I know you talked about songs being personal, sometimes with, stuff now i don't want things personally directed at me or things i can relate to i want stuff that i can escape from with escape with and this album hit it hard for me where i went okay it's relaxing it's calm it's it's really good and it's it's probably what was exactly needed for 2020 that wasn't screaming because I would have accepted an album of just screaming <laughs> at this point. I enjoyed pretty much. Like, like, there's a couple of songs on it that I'm, yeah. But I really do. Like, I think I really enjoyed the Great American Love Story. And there was another one on there, too, I really, really liked. But I think as a whole stuff like this and there's like a song to her grand grandmother on no it's not evermore mm -hmm. to her grandfather and i can like i get i get that it's just it's a good album it's just it's a nice album to escape from reality with yeah which is for desperately needed this year <laughs> all right that's my, um, that's my number three so my number three is a band I haven't listened to since probably college. Or like right Neither college. have I. Holy crap. <laughs> and I was didn't know what to expect on this new album. But then I heard the lead single, which is Burn It Down. And I was like, man, this is like I can find I found myself putting that song on repeat so much because it was so like it was upbeat. It was catchy, melodic, like it had everything. And it was just such a great song. So then, and then the next couple singles were off the album were released. And I was like, man, I'm like, these are really good too. I'm like, I really hope the rest of the album is like this. So then I couldn't wait for the album to come out. And sure enough, like I listened to that album in its entirety over and over, like right after it came out, like that's all I would listen to. Like it was so good. Um, and so that album is A Beautiful Place to Drown by Silver Sea. Um, 
it felt like it's a cool album cover. It, it, yeah, it's a really cool album cover. Um, it's not like super emo, but it's not like such a like. It's not like they're selling out either. Like it's not like it's like a super stretch from their original sound. Um, there's less screaming, which I'm a fan of, and more melody, but still stays true to you know their signature sound. Um, and Shane Todd's just, he's one of those vocalists who, like, his voice is the sound of the band. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I really, really love this album. It, it was just, it's so good. If you guys have not listened to it yet, it came out back in March, I think, early March. Um, you you really have to listen to it. It's, it's just so good. I'm going to have to check that out, because one, I forgot they existed as a musical group. You still haven't listened to it yet? No. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I. What are you even doing? Uh, <laughs> trying to write. That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, I, I, oh, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna get backlash from you for this. I know I am. Oh boy. Uh oh. So, about two months ago, uh huh, I was sitting down and watching SNL. Because mm-hmm. I, it's still one of the shows I've really enjoyed. Not right now. The writing's sh- just shit. So, yeah. uh, it's not Morgan Wallen, just to let everyone know. <laughs> I tried listening. Well, his to- album it doesn't even come out till next month. Well, he was on SNL recently. Oh. Because he went to a party at the University of Alabama and got kicked off the show because he wasn't taking COVID seriously. And then right. they just had him back on like a couple weeks ago. It's not him. But I'm sitting there and, and usually I just fast forward through the musical guest. About 90% of the time, it's always these boring, dull performances that, while not stripped down music, is they're trying to do their most artsy stuff possible. Because they're on SNL and they can get away with it. And at the time, I was going to fast forward with this, and I started listening to the lyrics. And went, holy crap, that's a really powerful song. I think I said, holy shit, that's powerful. (laughs) And I don't know if you've ever watched SNL, but there's a second musical number. It's really, it's even more rare for me to watch the second one, because that's always a song that no one knows. Because their first song, they always do the popular one. The second one, they'll do something that's not as popular. Yeah. You know, I'm holding this off just for the reaction, right? <laughs> I'm like waiting. Yeah. Trying to figure out who it is. And then the second song hit. And it was just as good. And I went, I'm going to listen to that album as soon as it comes out. Which is not something I would normally say at any time else. My number two album is Good News by Megan Thee Stallion. Really? It is so fucking good. I don't know, man. I saw her... Look, I, we talked about this on the last episode. I saw her um, on the... What was it? The Was it the Grammys? No. Grammys are in January. Um, the... Uh, what was the Billboard Award? What was it? That we just watched. What are you talking about? I think it was the Billboard Awards. I have no idea. I believe I it was. I think it might have been. I think it might have been the Bill. Was it, the, it has to have been the Billboard Awards, right? I think it was, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I. I don't know. I wasn't really impressed with it. Again, maybe it's just because I'm not into that style of music. I'm not really feeling like the, the new music today i don't know if that's it um but yeah i wasn't i uh, it was so good <laughs> it is i i'm not a hip-hop fan i will listen to certain albums here and there i listen to more 80s 90s hip-hop than i do new hip-hop mm-hmm. uh and this one caught me completely off guard because her performance on snl was very much 
it was a very powerful song and the way she told the way her lyrics were done was in such a way that it just glued me to the screen so when i went and i listened to the album and i felt the same way all the way through which is again really weird for me in hip-hop but it like if if evermore hadn't come out this was gonna be my number one. Oh man yeah that's how good this album is that's how good i think she is as a performer it, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll give it a I'll give it a shot just to say that I listened to it, but I can't make any promises. <laughs> well, no, because I mean, we have different styles of music. I think we can ver- yeah. like one hundred percent agree with this. It's just so good, and I don't know the name of the song on S that that caught me off the top of my head. I think it was "Shots Fired." I know she did "Shots Fired," and I can't remember the second song, but. Both songs just hit me just right where I was ready to listen to the whole thing. So Mm -hmm. if a live performance can make me want to listen to an album, I know I'm probably going to enjoy it. And then I sat down when it came out in November and listened to the whole thing start to finish (laughs) while working. And it, I stopped a couple of times just to actually take in the words. It's a good album. I am really oh, surprised yeah. I enjoyed this. But I really <laughs> enjoyed this. I was not expecting you to say that. Told you. <laughs> yeah. That's my number two. So... <laughs> So my number two is All Time Low. Um, so they've always been pretty consistent um, with their sound up until I think it was an album two years ago that they released. It was a little bit different. Um, but this Wake Up Sunshine album is just solid from beginning to end. It's upbeat. It's got its moments where it knows when it needs to be a little bit more um serious um slash like toned down a little bit but overall it's just a great pop punk album and especially in this day and age because i don't feel like we have a lot of great pop punk bands anymore um unless it's a, unless it's a new album by an older band but you know in this case um and i i think i said this earlier when it first came out wake up sunshine is the best pop punk album we've gotten since Blink 182's California. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I really enjoyed that album. Um, I thought it was really, really good. Um, and I don't think we've, we've had a really solid pop punk album since then up until now. Um, and this one is just, I mean, it's the kind of album you can put out in your car when you're driving around, you know, the sun's out and you just you want to blare something um this is the album to do that too and i think they did a really great job with monsters um and bringing in black bear because it was the perfect collaboration to bring pop punk and hip-hop or whatever you want to call it to the mainstream um it's like it's like if you, if alternative rock stations were still a thing, this would be played on alternative rock. This would be played on pop. I mean, pop radio. Um, it's just that perfect crossover between to to bring the both worlds together. Um, it, it's just a really great song. Um, I mean, for like a, just a fantastic album. Um, I, I really can't recommend this one enough, especially if you guys are fans of early to mid 2000s pop punk this is the album like we needed i listened to this i think it was in my top if i would have done more than five it would have ended up there and and, and it's not like it's it's mature writing too you know what i mean like they they touch on things that like as adults you struggle with you know like they touch on depression and anxiety and just 
all those things that you feel, you know, as that you struggle with as an adult. And, um, but it still brings a little bit of fun to it. it like, to the other songs as well. You know what I mean? Like they, they, ba- they balance everything really well. Um, so I, I, I really can't recommend this album enough. Um, it was a close tie. I wasn't sure what was going to be number two and what was going to be number one. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think I made the right, right decision. But it, it was a tough call. I, I I like this out. I don't know if I I know I've listened to some of number one, but I have not listened to all of it. You're number one. I should make that clear. Oh, I've listened oh. to no, I've listened to Evermore a few times. I now know the words to most of the songs on Evermore. I enjoy Evermore. I stayed up for that while having COVID. I don't think I did. I think I stayed up for folklore. Um, that was just one of those rare nights where like I was up doing stuff for the podcast and trying to catch up on stuff. And so folklore came out and I just stayed up and listened to it. Um, but evermore I did not. Oh, I, I don't remember I, why. I, I was, was just tired. so excited for that one. That guy, cause I woke up that morning to the news that there was going to be a new Taylor Swift album on her, like a two days before her birthday. I was really surprised when I heard that news. I'm not, I, I, I am. And I'm not, it's very much a Taylor move. I don't know if we'll get, like, I don't expect another album from her anytime soon, but she is re-recording all her old stuff now. Yeah. And one of those Which songs. Which is good because she, she deserves to own her, her own music. And one of those um, songs. I just don't want to com- change the sound. I don't think they will. One of those songs is in a commercial right now and it didn't change at all. Which one is that? It's a Ryan Reynolds commercial. I can't remember because we were. I was gonna write a, a story about it, and then that Disney news broke, and I'm like, I can't, I can't cover everything. Because <laughs> if you don't I know, think, I, I feel like I know the commercial, but I can't think of the song. Oh, hold on, I'll look this up real quick. Because, yeah, no, when Disney releases 407 pieces of news in about the span of three hours, <laughs> that's not a joke. That sucked. Uh, Taylor Swift and. Ryan Reynolds album or Ryan Reynolds ad, yeah, it's it's one of the re-records. Love story. And, oh really? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't see that commercial. And it is a re-record, and it's still it, it sounded like the original. So that is all that matters. I figure that mm-hmm. she's gonna keep them original. I I we might get some remixes later. But no, we don't. We don't need remix. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone's rebooting TV. Everyone's rebooting TV shows. Uh, there's a there's a there's a uh, remix of Willow that's I enjoy more than the original. I saw it. I added it to my library, but I have not listened to it yet. And it's even better when you put it on a fire for a Yule log, <laughs> which is one of the videos she uploaded. Interesting. I shared that. So Evermore was your number one album. Evermore was my number one. Okay. So my number one, what kind of took me by, kind of a little bit surprised me because, um, again, this was a band whose last couple albums I did did not care for. I haven't really liked anything by them um, since the mid to late 90s, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel the same way here. <laughs> and that I wanted to because the early stuff was so good, but then the rest was just, just not. <laughs> and um, when I heard they had a new album coming out, I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't know. And then I, I heard the single um, by accident, actually, um, because I was think I was scrolling through Instagram stories or flipping through them, and it came up as like an ad or something. And I was like, oh, that was really good. And I went back to see who it was because I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh, that's the new Bush song. It's like, well, let me go and actually listen to it all the way through. So I went and I did. And I was like, this, you know, this is really good. And the second single came out. I was like, oh, man. I'm like, this is really good, too. It's a little bit different, but, you know, it's really good. And then, when, yeah, so then I was getting really excited for the album. I was really hoping it wasn't going to disappoint. And it, it didn't. I mean, I listened to that whole album 
all the way through multiple times. Um, it's so good because he, it's got that early grungy sound that they had in the 90s, like grungy alt rock um, that made them so popular, but it also modernizes it. Um, it puts that modern feel to it. And, you know, and so it's a little bit harder. Um, and then, you know, he's got that, um, like a ballad, I guess you would call it, but it's not a, in a non-traditional sense. Like it's very slowed down and stripped. Like it's not like a repeat of glycerine, but it's, it's today's version of glycerine, I guess you could say. I mean, I only because like it, it is a ballad, but it's not like, it's much more stripped down. Like it's not like glycerine still had like a little bit more, it had way more guitar than what Undone has on the kingdom. Um, but it's just a really good album. Like, I mean, it's it, it really rocks. Like, it's just I, I was really not expecting to um, to like this album as much as I did. Um, but it, it was probably the best rock album we got all year. Um, and we had actually a lot of rock albums this year, um, quite a few actually. And this point, I mean, they really just talk about a comeback album um this one really really took the cake i'm gonna listen to it i'm still mad at him for the whole thing with gwen stefani but that's a whole nother thing oh yeah i mean see i can try and separate i can't the, too. The, the music from the the person i can't do i just want to make that there is one time i can't but this time i can't i just wanted to make that joke it just yeah made... i mean i i, I it... don't like him for what he did to gwen either I was but, gonna say, but that um, means as that, a musician, he's really good. That means after you divorce Gwen Stefani, you'll be signed to Relevant again after four years. Blake Shelton notes. <laughs> um, see, I can't believe you haven't listened to this album. It's more or less because I didn't know it existed outside this show. I, I told you though. I know. I've listened to some of it. I haven't listened to the whole thing. It's. I like Glycerine to the point where I'm like, I think that's the only Bush song that's ever been on a playlist. <laughs> See, I think my Glycerine's not even my favorite Bush song. Like, I love Little Things. Um, Come Down, um, Everything Zen, uh, it's, it's Machine either, Head. It's either that or I've just forgotten about Bush music to the point where I have just completely erased it from my memory. Also you possible. Need to go back, revisit. Also like, possible. Go back and listen to those early, those early singles, like the the, you know, the hit, and then listen to the new album. I think, I don't like. I I agree with you. This year has not been the worst, but it's definitely not been the best. Right. Exactly. Um, like there was nothing like super stand out. Like that was like that made you stop and go, oh my god, like this is life changing um no it, it wasn't anything like that you want to know something weird it, it, it had its moments it had its moments like i said like there are some bright spots you know like for me it was the kingdom and wake up sunshine and the silver scene album um you know and a couple others but overall i mean there's nothing that's made me go holy crap like i gotta sit down because this is just this is incredible i think this is going to be one of those years that the albums are going to grow in popularity in, in like 10 years from now. Hmm. You know how certain movies will go to the theater and they bomb, but yeah. 10 years they'll become fan favorites. Yeah. I think a lot of music from this, this year is going to fall into, Oh, these are now cult classic albums, which is not the I worst thing. Because you're always going to have fans listening to those. I can definitely see, like, The Bush and All Time Low and Silverstein and even, like, The Feeler um, becoming classic albums, like, down the line. I, It's going to be a weird... I don't know if we can judge how this year... Like, you know, last year we talked about how some of the albums were... 2019 might be one of the best years we've had in a long time. And then mm -hmm. going from that to... Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 2019, I just think about, like, the albums, like, I had, we had the Rob Thomas album, which was just, fan like, fantastic, like, outstanding. 
um, you had the the Louis Capaldi album, um, which was I mean, it's like the male Adele. Like there's just there's, there's just nothing wrong with him. Um, I think last year was also the was it last year or the year before? Um, I think it was last year, right? It was the OAR album. Um, See, I can't I get mean, into them. I have tried so many times. Oh, I love that so much. I, I've tried. The key, I've tried. The key with OAR, so they have phases in their music. Um, they have their, their jam band stuff, which is very early on, which is a little bit more like reggae with a little bit of pop, in, with a little bit of pop rock in there. Um, and then their their later stuff gets a little bit more pop rock, you know, like Shattered and um, I'm trying to think of another good example. Um, my brain is right, you guys, but like that kind of era. And then it kind of goes back to like the reggae, but mixing it with the pop rock and, and the new album, The Mighty really does a great job of balancing all of that so well. Um, but they're just such a fun band. I mean, you, you would think they've I got would... saxophone and, you would horn, think I... and like a whole horn section. As someone who loves ska, you would think. But is... see, ska is different than reggae. Like this is definitely a little bit more on the reggae side than to... the ska side. But I do listen. But you would think, though, in general, because I I do listen to. Maybe you're just not listening to the right songs. I, I just I haven't been able to find something that I can latch into. Not saying that there isn't something out there, because I feel like most artists, there's always one song I can latch onto. Yeah, I can send you a playlist I have of like my favorite songs. Shoot, go for it. I'll listen. You know what? That could be a fun little thing a segment of. <laughs> Let's give me a chance to listen to something, and I will give you an honest opinion. I, yeah. I don't. I, I'll I'll give this a shot because we need segments. And <laughs> <laughs> it's oh hey, it's happy twenty five days of Christmas. This is going up on December twenty third. Probably should say this. <laughs> Actually, going um, up five minutes after we record. <laughs> And the the list, uh, my official list, will be up on the website as well in print. So Some, for those of you who don't want to tomorrow? listen, um, can just read it. I think it's tomorrow. I think it's in between all the okay. letters of the Santa. Because <laughs> I need filler content um, that is not Santa letters. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good change. Of I'm pace. working. On, I'm working on something for you. Yeah, no, you told me what it was, and I'm excited for it because after the last show, and yes, I got the email. After the last show, <laughs> and a lot of those were specifically targeted at me that I was mean. That's funny. Y'all can suck it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that. The comment is going to be turned into a t-shirt, and those will be going on sale in 2021. Yeah. I, I just... I can't wait for that. I We, we had a very good argument. And it has, in fact, now most of our shows are turning into debates, which is great listening, and I know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. woo Yeah, give me some mute. Like, send me some bands. I'm yeah. cool with it. I will. I'll start with the OAR, and then we'll go from there. Oh, boy. Um, uh, I want to tell you, though, guys, I am so excited for next year's music, and I'll tell you why. Because next year, the world finally gets a full-length debut album from Ryan Kinder. <laughs> I just want to know you when guys, the dang Adele album comes out. She's like not even the same person. Like I, I don't know how I would feel about a new Adele album because she's like not even the same person. I know she can still um, belt. I just am saying I just want the new the new Adele album, which was supposed to be Christmas last year, and we still haven't gotten it. Yeah, but she's also gone through some shit too. So yeah, I know. Maybe she's still working on it. Um, you guys, I'm sorry. I have to brag about this this Ryan Kinder album because he is so talented, and the stuff that he has released like so far right now doesn't even like cut the surface of what he's capable of. The album, I'm, I'm lucky enough to to get to listen to it um, right after he was on the show, and I've listened to that album so many times and from the very first full listen I was completely blown away like it lived, it met every one of my expectations and then some this 
fully puts all of his talents on display um, the way it should be. And I can't wait for everyone else to get to hear it and finally get to see or hear what he's capable of because there's so much talent in that, in this one human being. And it's just insane. Um, and that there's so many different styles of music and vocal styles and genres and songwriting styles. And, but it doesn't feel like, like a hot mess of an album. It, it's very cohesive and still surprises you. And it's just so full of life and emotion and energy. And this is no doubt going to be like my number one album of 2021. I cannot wait for it to be released. I cannot wait for the rest of the world to get to hear it. My mind... It deserves to be heard on so many different platforms. I think my mind is blown. I've just... I looked up a list of what is coming out in 2021. Really? Yeah, some of the uh, highlights of what's coming out in 2021. And I'm not, I, I'm just confused. You're confused? I'm confused. There's a new Foo Fighters album, apparently. There's a new. Um, e- yeah, because they released a new single, like, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago, so a month ago. There's a new Evanescence album. Yeah, the EP, they, was it them or Within Temptation? One of them released the EP and it was not really good. I think it was with, it might have been them. Uh, there's a new Rob Zombie album, a new Alice Cooper album. I just sitting here looking at this going, what? Bonnie Tyler? What the hell? Uh, oh. Yeah. There's uh, Willie Nelson. Okay. Uh,. I'm just skimming, so I will Corey Taylor. I will probably just lose and miss somebody. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's so far. There looks to be some decent releases. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure how many there will be, but Rob I'm excited Zombie. for 2021. The Evanescence is March 26th. Hey, Greta mm-hmm. Flan Fleet. I actually like them. I don't, and maybe it's just because I, I, I didn't like Zeppelin, and I feel like they're this generation. Oh, I get Zeppelin. that. I, yeah, I don't think they're that, but I, I, I enjoy them for what they are. I think that pretty much, like, are they going to be the first thing I go to listen to? No, but if it's on, all right. Yeah, the Pretty Reckless has a new album too. Good grief! I tried to listen to that, and I just couldn't. Like, I wanted to like it, but I, I just couldn't. Maybe I have to go back, but. The first time I tried to listen to it, I just I couldn't get through well, it. I, I like the pretty reckless. I are you talking about? I liked a couple of their older songs, but the new stuff, no. And then Florida Georgia Line has a new album. That thing can burn. Uh, I'm just gonna go into that. Oh. Horribly. Uh, and outside that, I don't really see anything else that catches my. Eye. Cool. That's what's out. That's Nelly's supposed to release a country album. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> There's a new Rat album, supposedly, next year. Wow, that guy's still alive. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you know what's funny? Whenever... <laughs> Do you guys ever see that commercial for the... I think it's Allstate Insurance. Oh, and uh, it's this couple sitting in like the house that they just bought or whatever, and it's like, the house is great, you know? Well, except for the rat problem, and it's the band, the rat playing in the basement, maybe, or the I think it's the basement, um, and then you just hear them sing like round and round. And every time I hear that commercial, like, it just makes me laugh, like it's funny. And my mom hates that commercial because when that album first came out, back when it was like, I think like on vinyl, I'm assuming maybe no, maybe I don't know. Um, but back when that album first came out, my dad played the shit out of that album. And my mom hated it so much. So she thought that, you know, like when my dad was done, like finally, like she wouldn't have to hear that again. Well, then my brother, you know, when he got into his, um, like, adolescence, early teen years, he went back and started listening to, like, he went through this big phase. I shouldn't say phase, but he still listens to a lot of it. Um, of listening to the, the same 80s and hair metal bands that my dad listened to back in the day. And so my mom had to hear that stuff she hated all over again. <laughs> That's and so funny. then that commercial just reminds her of it. It's hilarious. 
That's funny. Uh, also, to add to the humor, uh, well, I guess not humor, but it makes me kind of excited, a new Garbage album? Oh. Yeah. Bands I never thought I'd hear from again. I feel like that we're going to see more of that. Natalie Imbruglia is on this list. Really? Yeah. I, the Scorpions are on this. I give up. That's where we stop. That I did hear that they were releasing a new album. I'm done. All right. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. I, I I think that's a good show stopper on the Scorpions. Oh my god. <laughs> so, you guys have heard our top five uh, picks for 2020's music releases. Um. For more details, at least from mine, you guys will get to read the full list um, on the website tomorrow, I'm assuming you said that, right? That's the plan, yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I think it will be, and I don't know if it'll be next week, I'm not going to make any promises, um, but if not next week, it'll be after the first year. I was going to say, it'll definitely, be the new, again. it'll definitely be the new year. I think, I think <laughs> next week is my one week that I'm kind of taking off. Okay. Cause, oof. So we're going to try and bring you guys some exciting stuff uh, in the new year. I'm going to try and work on some interviews and we've got a bunch of um, different topics we're going to talk to you guys about and we still have our Scream episode that we have to do. Um, that will definitely be next month. Yes. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to, we're going to bring more of the pop culture in, but um I, I still want to keep it very music focused. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, we will see how, how things go come, uh, come January um, in terms of how, you know, things are going in the world and things start opening up and, you know, we start hearing news about concerts and conventions and all that fun stuff. Um, we will continue to keep you guys updated and provide you with, the best content we can give you. I agree. Um, with that. Yeah. So with that said, um, it is this is it is the night before Christmas Eve that we are recording this. So I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. Um, don't go out if you do not have to. Um, just everyone stay safe, and we will see you in the new year. Um, and until then, you guys, as always, happy listening.